Hello, Human Garage Network. It is Christopher Wateki with Astro Monday, and I am live right here, actually, in front of the St. Louis Arch. I'm traveling. It's such a pleasure to be here. Hello, everyone. Say hello. If you are in the chat, say hello. Mr. Gary is traveling today, so I am hosting this by myself, which means I might take some people up on camera. I'm going to be playing with my hair the entire time because I'm backlit. <laughs> so here we go. Excellent. How is everyone today? We are in Leo. We are in the revolution, the revolution of self-love, a self-love revolution. Hello, everyone. Tell us your sun sign, your rising sign, and your moon sign. I'm drinking poisoned um, Starbucks coffee because I am tired in my travels. Hello. Love you too. Hello, the Rush girl. Hello from VT. I don't know where that is. Hello. What a view, huh? We got quite a view here behind us. Have this fabulous hotel room with the St. Louis Arch behind me. This is the Mississippi River here. Sludging down the Americas. All of America's toilets are going down the river. <laughs> this is the, uh, the uh, toilet of the country here, you know, unfortunately. Hello, everyone. All right. Not sure of the other signs. Well, let's talk about what's going on, shall we? Let's give you a, a nice preview of the week to come, which is what I like to do here on the Human Garage Network. I'm Christopher Wateki, Sensei Christopher Wateki, the Sensei to Serious Joy. I'm the curator and creator of SeriousJoy.com, where you can go and look up your step number at any time or have us watch you. VT is Vermont. Hello, Vermont. Thank you for that. Sometimes I don't know because there's some... Um, a lot of Canadians in this in this uh, live because of Gary, and so I, I don't know all the areas of Canada. I'm embarrassed to say, but it's true. All right, so we are in. <clears throat> Today is Monday, July 29th, and I am calling this week "Crowning Royal Self Love." So to catch you up on our story of us being humans, we're in a very very uh, powerful year actually for the human race. It's probably one of the most powerful years. In our entire lifetime, if you look back, you'll realize it was as far as you coming into your personal empowerment. The reason why it's so significant is because up until now, uh, since 2012 or so, hello Brazil, we have been um, we have been facing what we call our karma, and your karma is your subconscious beef with yourself. So we're all born with a beef with ourselves. We're all born upset at ourselves. Okay. And this is why people are grouchy and mean and do drugs and all this other stuff is because of this subconscious grudge with ourself, which is known as karma. All right. In the in the, in the Vedas or in India, they called it karma. Karma is that your soul wants to get it right and is upset that you didn't and you want a second go at it. All right. So we manifest all these different um, situations in our life that that resemble the time that we failed. And so when we do that, we call up all these feelings and all these expressions of the time we failed. We sort of go into a sub subconscious trance and we relive these experiences known as karma. The good news is, is that we have, for the most part, relived all of our personal karmic stuff. All right. Um, we've relived all of it because Saturn is now at 18 degrees and retrograde in Pisces. So Saturn has cleared all of the past life mistakes that we have made with ourself or made with life, okay? Now, there's still the karma that has to do with society and society going wrong or society going right. And that karma with society, we will face next year, ironically, after the next presidential elections, which I'm getting a very strong consensus about this, by the way. As far as amongst my peers, it's becoming very psychically clear what's going to happen in the presidential race. It's becoming very psychically clear it's going to be held up by the Supreme Court, too, by the way. I'm just going to put that out there right now and say we probably won't have a president until January or February of next year. But that's because we're going to face our karma with society. But we have faced all of our karma with ourself and with the mistakes we make in our daily life. We faced all that karma. Um, and so this Leo season um, is a little rough because it's bittersweet. They're, you know, so far today we're at step um, seven. We're going into step seven. We're in step six, Leo. We're going into step seven, Leo, this afternoon. 
Six is where you open up and accept in your heart um, basically who you are and that you love yourself. So today's goal is to come to the conclusion that you unconditionally love yourself and you will always unconditionally love yourself no matter what mistakes you make, no matter what you go through, whatever you have in life. So today we, um, um, right, they are sworn in January, but I think there'll be a Supreme Court holdup. Um, that's what I'm just saying. <clears throat> I think there's going to be a Supreme Court holdup. I feel. My, I feel and my colleagues feel too. I've been asking my colleagues. I have a team of astrologers that I work with at Serious Joy. I have a team of psychics I work with at LOL. We all do consensuses with, of our, you know, what we're picking up on. And we're all picking up on the winners becoming pretty clear now. And, um, and it being held up in courts uh, is becoming pretty clear too. I'm just putting out there. So, you know, the point is, is that of all this is um, – that first of all, your happiness does not hang on who is president, who is not. Our happiness does not hang on society. In fact, society needs to be hanging on our happiness. We've got it backwards. We've allowed ourselves to be hijacked by media, hijacked by Hollywood, hijacked by organized religion, everything hijacked. Our story's all caught up in their stories. And the truth is, it's, it's not. And it's not as soon as we say it's not, right? So where we are now with Leo is, in this next week, I call it, crowning royal self-love is because this week you will realize in your heart that you're number one or you'll realize that you're not number one so some people will realize they're not number one and that'll go into a depression and then i'll go into a um you know go, will eventually lead to being number one so if you haven't done the self-love work then you go through this whole little like you know mini depression in your heart where you realize you're not loved, you're not getting the love you want, you realize you're not getting the joy you want, and you finally sit there in that in that puddle of goo and realize, well, you're the only one that can lift yourself up, so let's do it. So, you know, no matter which path people take, the easy arc or the hard or the hard arc, <laughs> um, you will come to the same conclusion, which is that you deserve to live a royal life of love. You deserve a life that you love, you deserve a partner that you love, you deserve children that you love, you deserve animals that you love, and you deserve to be loved and kind, basically. And obviously, that's an obvious statement, but we're not living it, right? So that's the difference. And I think we're finally at a point where we're ready to live it. We're ready to experience a life of love and joy. So what's going to happen is some people who still believe that their happiness depends on the outer world, they will start to sink, okay? So, and this isn't a cruel thing. I already went through it. Like I already sank the last seven years. So no one gets out of it. I just, because I'm a leader, I dove in the pool first. <laughs> okay. Like, and I swam that, I swam that murky river and I, I've come to the end result, which is a happy ending, rainbows of joy. Um, life is going to be everything you ever wanted and more. That's the end of this result. But we go through this journey where you're either going to put yourself up as a self-love, like like realize that you are the king or queen of your life and that life is your domain. You are not a subject in someone else's kingdom. You are the king or queen and this is your kingdom. Humankind, when, when, when Jesus was saying the kingdom of God, he was speaking to his heart is the kingdom of God. And so therefore, if your heart is the kingdom of God or the queendom of God, however you wanna go with the gender pronouns, <clears throat> then you become a creator of reality rather than a subject in someone else's reality. And that is the enlightenment that's happening right now is that we are realizing I am the creator of my reality. I am the one that makes this happen. I am the one that is responsible for all the good and all the bad that's happened to me. The bad news is, yes, I ran my life into the ground. I made all those problems happen. The good news is I don't have to repeat any of that ever again and I can live the happy life that I want to live. That is the wake-up call of the royal crowning of yourself. Now, what we end up doing over the course of this is <clears throat> that um, and I love that you know life is opening up now. Look at I have the, I have the arch behind me, which is the gateway to the west, right? And the gateway to the west is the gateway to tomorrow because the sun sets in the west. So whenever you have a religion or anything that's pointing to the west, it's pointing to tomorrow. Anytime you have a religion that's pointing to the east, it's pointing to yesterday. And it's funny how religions actually will devote to one coast or the other. And it pretty much tells you what that religion is devoted to, the past or the future. 
But I am promoting the future today, uh, the future where you are the king or queen of your own heart, where you are the master of your own reality, where you are the one that makes life happen. That is a distinct difference. Now, what my po belief is, is that the future is where we're going next is we come into this kingdom of self-love. We commit to building the dream. So Uranus is at 25, uh, 26 degrees Taurus, which happens to be my Venus. Um, which is really interesting to see, actually, now that Uranus has caught up to my Venus. Because my Venus has always been, it's a 26 degree Venus. It, your Venus is your womb, okay? My womb is huge, to quote Bernie Sanders, huge. 26 Taurus is that I can create something very large, much larger than me, because I'm just an 18, um, and hold space for that much larger than life kind of thing is. I'll just share with you, I've had a vision since I was 18 of what I wanted to do. And I'm pretty much on target with that vision. Um, it took me, it took, it's taken 18 years actually since I've been in the driver's seat to get to this place. But what's interesting is now that Uranus has hit my Venus, um, what the fuck is this joker yapping about? Well, young, come on and talk to me about it. Come on, why don't you come on board and let's talk. What's happening is, is that we, um, we are now moving into this future. We're creating this future with Uranus at 26 degrees. Hey, man, what's up? What's up, homie? What, 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 I, I want to answer your question. Have you ever been into astrology before? How do you follow the Human Garage Network? Um, I started following the account because I am uh, interested in the body. Oh, gotcha. So I do, a I do a show on the network where we talk about the energy. Um, we talk about the energy in the body and how it leads to so this is sort of like one step before the body is what this is. Um, could you repeat that? Uh, you, you broke up a little bit there. Yeah, I lost you. So uh, this is this Astro Mondays is we talk about the energy going on on the planet and the energy happening in people's bodies. And we, we uh, translate it to how the energy in the body turns into disease or health in the body. Okay, beautiful. I apologize. <laughs> I apologize if I came on too strongly. Well, no, I just, I thought it was a great opportunity, like, because there's probably a lot of people like you thinking that. And so I, and I just like to get face to face with people. Thank so what's your, you. what's your birthday, man? Uh, my birthday just passed. I'm July 19th. Oh, happy birthday. Thank happy you. belated birthday. You. So you're what is known as a cancer. And actually you're known as a master cancer. So out of all the cancers, you're the most, one of the most talented. Um, oh. And the, the, the talent of cancer is the ability to process emotion, mm. which, which human beings are pretty shitty at, except you. Mm. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Now, you may feel cranky or you may feel a little uh, moody as a person, but you're actually probably more talented at it than the other average person. <laughs> so, um, well, I just want to bring you up and, and let you ask any questions or whatever. And, um, and thank you for being courageous enough to come on, man. Yeah, of course. Thank you. For the invite thank you for the explanation i just i logged in um uh halfway through your live so i didn't know what was going on <laughs> so i appreciate you explaining it my pleasure yeah um and you'll you'll have to exit yourself out because i don't think i could throw someone else off okay <laughs> um, nice meeting you dude nice meeting you too awesome there's a great tribe here um at human garage i'll tell you everyone watching is great it looks like i'm overexposed now it's not going to show my background well that's goofy that sucks it was a great view. Now I just feel godly. <laughs> um, so yeah, I love talking to people and getting people on, especially people who don't understand the, the energy aspect of, um, of astrology. So what I was saying is that now that uh, Uranus has hit my personal Venus, there we go. We have the arch coming slowly back in. I guess I have to just change the exposure here to be more personal. Huh. Interesting. Interesting. Um, now that it's come there, I'm actually in the process of – manifesting everything I was set out to manifest when I was 18 is actually happening now. So for anyone who wants to do like Astro Records, um, it took till Uranus got to my Venus for things to actually happen as far as the clockwork of the universe is concerned. Very interesting stuff there. So the key question to ask yourself this week is, um, what is my vibe? What is my vibe? So everyone has to have at the end of the day, um, a certain vibe in them and that vibe is what sets the tone for all of your all of your manifestations of reality one thing that i think that human garage does really well hands-on 
is that it, it actually helps you reset your vibe reset your nervous system so that you can set the tone of your vibe because quite often we find ourselves subject uh, as almost like a passenger to our vibration not the driver of our vibration and with the earth in Aquarius right now with the sun in Leo um, it means that we are manifesting a new vibe in which we live in <clears throat> day to day <clears throat> and you will not explore new vibes until the sun goes into Aquarius six months from now. So, you know, astrology pretty much being the clockwork of how human beings rotate their consciousness. So this is the time to manifest the right vibe. And I'll tell you, with stuff going on in the future with politics and world power grabs, we are going to have a lot of world power grabs starting around September 1st. And so we want to adopt a vibe that is unflappable by what's happening in the world. That's You want to try to adopt that vibe right now for a couple of reasons. One is that takes our power back. So when we withdraw from the emotional back and forth um, of society, you know, we withdraw from it. Like just what just happened now. We had a person come on who was, had a heated text. I addressed it and just tried to neutralize it like – I think we're on the same page, you know? So the more we stay, the more we come to realize that, Hey, we're on the same page here. We may not understand one thing or another. We might, uh, and not allow us to be thrown off that center of our vibe. Then we actually take the power back because I believe that the polls, the bots, the, 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 you know, there's so much, you don't realize it, but the powers that be are constantly monitoring all of our comments, all of our, um, replies, everything. It's not a big brother thing. It's, it's an algorithm. It's a program that they, they pay for. It's very simple. It's a simple program. Scrapes the vibe of society, and they're constantly getting reads off of the vibe of society. If we as a society suddenly stop reacting to what we're being thrown at us like, like little you know pebbles, like for trick animals, then suddenly it creates a huge ricochet uh, wake up jolt to the establishment. The wake up jolt is uh, they're awake and they're paying attention. Okay. The other wake up jolt is uh, I think I'll decide what my destiny is going to be from this point forward. Thank you. Like, I think you thank you for getting us here from extinction to, you know, this point, but we'll take it from here. The people will take it from here. That's kind of, I think the, the energy that has to go out there. Um, and so this serves you in two ways. One, it serves you in the sense that you can disconnect and start manifesting what you want without knowing stock prices are going to be, without knowing whether or not your interest rate is going to go up or down. You can start manifesting right now independently of the system. Okay, Everyone is capable of manifesting independently of the system. I am currently manifesting independently of the system. What does that mean? I'm not allowing anything in my outer life to affect my inner, my inner calm, my inner center. I'm just not going to allow it to happen. I'm going to be stubborn about it. And it's not about me controlling you. It's not about me having to get my way or prove my way with you. It's that I use my own God-given right to just block your energy and be like, nah, that's not going to work, right? And a lot of people, you know, good poker players can block energy. A wife that's pissed at you can block energy. I know. I've had my, my, my girlfriend's wife has been like, you're blocked. And it's like, ah, <laughs> you feel that right away when you're blocked. You don't have access anymore. And, you know, some people are saying here, um, people stop watching the news. That's great. But we're still interacting on social media. Really, where they're feeding from is social media. It's not TV. So I love that you're not watching television. I'm not watching it either. But it's really our interactions on social media, our commenting, all that sort of stuff. That's where people are getting most of the feedback from. So the key question of the week is, what is going to be your vibe on the inside? I really want to. Oh, there we go. I just had to. Oh, cool. I just had to tell it to expose to me. That's interesting. Well, that was my God phrase. Now we're back on earth. <laughs> back to the St. Louis art chair behind me. Very interesting. I didn't realize you could ch change exposure with Instagram. So let me give you the layout for the week, folks. And I might bring someone else up on camera too, because um, usually I'm chit-chatting here with Gary. So we'll do a little of our, our Zodiac mechanics from Thursday. Um, today you're opening up and you're accepting... Unconditional self-love, for one thing. So it's just, I'm just going to love myself and love myself some more. That's unconditional. And what 
vibe am I going to stay at all the time? And it's funny, I didn't have my notes with me, but I was just downstairs at the hotel in the lobby, excuse me, getting some coffee. And I was really starting to say to myself, yeah, I'm really digging this vibe that I'm in, um, this vacation vibe. And I realized, yes, this vacation vibe, this is going to be my year round vibe. I'm going to always feel like I'm on vacation. That's the vibe I'm choosing. Um, and just feel like it's always just, everything is just unfolding. Whatever time we have dinner is fine. Whatever, whatever this happens, it's fine. That's going to be sort of the attitude I take. Tomorrow is a spiritual day. So this afternoon to tomorrow is a lot of spiritual learning about yourself where you might have to mourn. You might have to cry a little bit um, when you realize how much you put yourself through. And there's always that. And, and you definitely want to go ahead and have that cry and let it out because we don't have time for puddles right now. And that kind of stuff just needs to come out because our fre frequency needs to go up. And so you might, you might have, come, have a come to Jesus with yourself between now and Wednesday where you realize I've really got to quit beating myself up or quit smoking or quit, you know, toxins or quit Starbucks or, you know, a lot of things are quitting. You know, a lot of times self-love issues have to do with the way we are beating ourselves up repeatedly. It's not that we don't pick ourselves up when we're hurting. It's that we hurt ourselves over and over again with criticism and oh, I should have done that and oh my god I'm worried about it. I pissed them off and how many hours a day are you spending not happy with yourself that's a lack of self-love it doesn't do you any good to be hard on yourself that doesn't make it better it doesn't improve you one bit it doesn't do anything all it does is make you cruel and keep yourself behind and don't worry as far as loving yourself too much people are like I don't want to love myself too much why what would happen when we start to see missiles come out of the sky, what would happen if you loved yourself too much? You think people will be, you know, the people who don't like you when you love yourself too much are people who don't love themselves. So whenever I have a person that starts to get mean to my inner child, I'm like, ooh, your inner child is very unhappy because mine is so happy, right? Some people get jealous, you know, that happens. But even then, you end up feeling sorry for them. You don't end up being hurt because you're happy. So bummer that they're not happy. But we're at this point where it's time to strike that chord of whatever it takes, time for me to be happy. It's time for me to love myself. Whatever it takes, it's time. It is time. So you make that decision on hump day. Hump day is always the hump day. If you follow me at seriousjoy.com, it's always the hump day. And on Wednesday, you decide you're going to love yourself or you're not going to love yourself. Now, some people will manifest a reason to love themselves. They'll manifest like a little... Um, exercise. So it'll be like, oh, well, if you, you then go to the doctor if you love yourself, or then leave that abusive relationship if you love yourself, or then quit that bad job, give notice. So a lot of times um, people will manifest a literal rite of passage, like a literal story that you make yourself go through to prove to yourself in the flesh that you love yourself. Okay. I'm at a point now where I don't have to do that, but just a year ago, I was creating crisis as a means of proving that I love myself. So, you know, I'm not that far along, but I finally at a point where I don't have to sabotage in order to prove, to come to my own rescue to prove that I love myself, right? So we commit that you love yourself on Wednesday. Then on Thursday, we put that into action. So you have to prove it. So you do have to do something that proves it. That proving could be, you know, that you put money down on the house that you want. That proving could be that you um, take yourself to that doctor that you've been, you know, you've had this issue with your body for a year. You haven't gotten it checked up at once. So it could be something like that. But whatever it is, you have to do. You can't just say. Saying is not enough. And this year in particular, it's really not enough. Um, the people who are going to be on what I call the 5D bus – which is the bus of finding happiness and joy, what I call serious joy in your life. To get to serious joy, you have to love yourself and love yourself some more is our mantra. And so what that means is um, putting money down on the house I want today. No, you can put it down on the house today, happy camper. You can today. Anything you do between today and Thursday is fine. I would have said not yesterday, but today is fine. So my point is, is love yourself and love yourself some more. What does that mean? Okay. It means this. If I say to myself, you know what? I'm going to love myself. I'm going to go ahead and get me that Starbucks because I, I just want it. I don't want to go without on the air without a coffee. It's just my little baba. 
love myself some more is, and I got a sandwich for later because I know I'm going to be hungry. I'm not even hungry now. It's going to be for later. So the point is I showed up and love myself and love myself some more. You have to have two scoops of love to ascend. If you only love yourself once, you'll stay where you are in a content place. That means that whenever I do anything for myself, it's two scoops, all right? Some cases, it's buying two bottles of orange juice. In some cases, it's buying two Apple watches. Yes. Is it about abundance? No, it's not about having seven that I don't need. It's having more than I need. And when you continually give yourself more than you need, all right, then you will love attract more than you need, which we have a term for abundance. So when you are abundantly loving yourself, it's not just feeling good. It's not just having two watches, a gold and a silver. It's that you will start to draw in more jobs, more money, more abundance. Everything becomes more. Okay. Two scoops for me. Good, Shiloh. Now, this, this love myself and love myself some more must be utilized and in play by Saturday. Yes, it is being recorded, I believe so, by Saturday. It must be utilized by Saturday. Um, satisfying your desires? Absolutely satisfying your desires. Yes. Oh, it's cutting out? Oh, that sucks. I'm sorry it's cutting out. That might be the hotel I'm on. Damn. Yes, it is going to be recorded. Yes, it will. Sorry, folks. Man, we'll get better at this. Um, it is fine. So some people have to say it's fine. Okay, maybe it's y'all's internet. Okay, good. Thanks, Carlos. Good. Thanks, them, Lisa. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Burgundy. All right, so I won't get distracted on the signal. See, that's very easy for me to just go whoo, way off another direction. So love myself and love myself some more. All right, so I challenge y'all. I'll be on the air Thursday. I want to hear about people and whether or not I would love to hear examples of how you loved yourself and love yourself some more because I feel like it's something I kind of play as a game in the moment, right? Or I'm always doing two scoops of love for myself. So I'm always looking for where that extra scoop is. A lot of times, like with self-care, it'll be like, and I do my nails, you know, like, because I'm a man, we, we have to have nice nails too. I'll like add on something when I'm getting dressed or I'll add on something um, when I'm working on the house. I'll like go the extra mile, pull behind the, the fridge, clean behind the fridge. Like it's always at love yourself some more. So Saturday we have step 11. So step 11, that's where you want to be in this step of loving yourself and loving yourself some more. Okay. Because on step 12, which is next Sunday, a week from yesterday, six days from now, we have a shipload of stuff happening. For one, it's the new moon at step 12 Leo. Step 12 Leo is the new philosophy of the heart. The new philosophy of the heart ought to be, I'm going to love myself and love myself some more. That should be the new philosophy of the heart. What happens is that philosophy becomes a philosophy of life, all right, until you change it otherwise. And the only time we change, like, you know, a philosophy of life from the heart. So if you think about, like, the seven dwarves, you know, hi-ho, hi-ho, off to work I go. That's a, that's a heartfelt philosophy of life, right? I'm going to have Disney lawyers at the door any second now. But basically, you, you adopt this sort of whistly uh, song of the heart, and that song of the heart is the crowning, the crowning of the royal self-love. That's the royal self-love. You have this kind of uh, whisper, this dance of the heart. That happens on, on Sunday if you, that we plant this song of the heart, okay? The same thing on Sunday, uh, Mercury stations retrograde at 10.56 p.m. that night at 4 degrees Virgo, which uh, will be a, you know, a full three-week retrograde through Virgo and back into Leo. And basically what's going to happen is Next Sunday is the new moon and Mercury retrograde. Once you say, this is my song of my heart, this is my, um, this is my, uh, uh, my dance with myself, okay, then I'm going to take on the life. Mercury retrograde says, well, then we're going to have to rethink who we're becoming. Those are the first degrees of Virgo. Who are, who are we becoming then? Who we're becoming inside is not who we thought we were becoming on the inside. So there's this um, this realization 
that I'm not the the hurt one, the sick one, the abandoned one, whatever that that label was, it's erased. So we erase that, that label with ourselves. I'm no longer the wounded one, the abandoned one, the whatever, whatever that label is. That label goes away. And because I'm no longer this, that means my dreams, which is the spectrum that Mercury will go through next after Virgo, my dreams and what I'm aiming for, what is the golden ticket? What is the golden age? What is the golden egg? What is the diamond egg? That is now going to update because I am not this loser from Illinois. That's where I'm from. Indiana. That's also where I'm from. Missouri. That's where I am right now. California. That's where I was before. <laughs> so, um, and so what happens is a complete rewrite. So during the month of August, this is really where the population splits. All right. Because if you are realizing you have been the thing holding you back, therefore you can now decide to go forward. Therefore, the only thing stopping you is you then you, my friend, are on your way to 5D, what we call Earth 3. Earth 3, 5D. You're on your way to serious joy. Other people will say, because the Democrats failed me, because the Repubs are rhinos, because this, because of that, because of taxes, because of the stock market, because of jobs, because of inflation, because of the cows, because of, of COVID, because of the, 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 the shot, whatever, because of that, my life is doomed. And what's interesting is their creativity will begin to write that doom into the script. And so we're going to have this big splitting of society where everyone's going to see the presidential election and what happens from that vantage point. So if you see it from um, we're doomed, then, we, then you are. You are. You, you get exactly what you want. If you see that we are liberated, then you are. Now, I know what you're wondering. How can both happen at the same time? The truth is both is always happening at the same time. 98% of your life is only you. You are looking at the, the national stuff, and you are writing your world according to what you see. You're not interacting with the president. You're not talking to Kamala or Kamala. I can't remember. I don't even know how to pronounce her name. Forgive me. Kamala? Is it Kamala or Kamala? I don't even know. Kamala. Forgive me, Kamala. I have no disrespect. I just have been heard so many media things of your name. I now don't even know what's the real one. I have to go look it up and, and actually research it. Um, but my point is, is that, and I, I, and I don't know, what's interesting is, is I haven't figured out yet if, if we switch timelines to where I end up getting the president that I think is going to win, or if, um, if I, if I don't, and I, it doesn't make a dent of difference. It's one of the two, but either way, it's not going to make a dent of difference because the human race is waking up right now to the fact that we actually write the story. What we react to, what we, what, how we respond is what actually writes our story. It's not what comes at us. We have the power to ter determine what comes at us basically. So, uh, so that said, Venus will square Uranus on Friday. Venus and Leo at 26 degrees will square Uranus at 26 degrees Taurus on Friday. So next Friday, as you are claiming this new royal self-love and coming into this new royal <clears throat> awakening of loving yourself, then everyone's official future story pivots on Friday. So I'll tell you right now, if you've never believed in astrology or never even thought about energy work, try it this week. Try this week. If you love yourself and love yourself some more until Friday, and that means that every time you respond to yourself, you give yourself two dashes of love, okay? Every time you, you check in with yourself, you give yourself two dashes of love. I will predict that by Friday, something major will happen in your future. Your future will change. I believe you will change, um, it will change your fate on Friday. And I believe you will see evidence of your fate changing. Now, We'll probably see world fate change on Friday. So we'll probably see something happen in the headlines, maybe something between Israel and their conflict. Um, the conflict maybe in um, going on in Ukraine. There'll be some sort of world power flip. Um, I've been talking about the royals. I'm, I'm really, you know, Prince Charles, I, I'm questioning his health also. I'm not trying to be that bad out there, but 
I wouldn't be surprised if we have an early rise of, of the young king for whatever reason. I've been predicting that for a while now. But we'll see, see something um, major happen uh, probably on Fridays. And you in your life will see something major happen as well. Then what happens, just to give me like a, a bigger kind of play, um, which I've been talking about in my, my weekly Namaste Today Lives on Friday nights, by the way, on YouTube, is that we're basically going through this metamorphosis change inside of you. If you love yourself and love yourself some more and you make that your new whistle while you work philosophy of life, then you're going to have a major shift in the way you relate to yourself on the inside. And when I say a major shift, I'm talking about, you know, going from, you know, let's say the entry level in a company to feeling like a CEO or going from a person on set to the person who is the star on camera or going from rags to riches. It's that big of a shift inside. It's energetic. And the shift happens basically over Labor Day. So we're calling it in Labor Day this year because we're going to be in labor with a new version of ourself. By the way, that new version of ourself isn't completely solidified until Halloween. Our staff has looked as far as how, how far ahead it takes. It's not until step six Scorpio, which is around October 29th, that we will be fully metamorphosized on the inside. And again, <clears throat> It all comes down to this week, this week, because this is the week that you either adopt this philosophy that you are your best friend and you whistle while you work and life is always going to be a jewel in your palm of your hands. If you adopt that philosophy now, then you will be the rock star by Halloween. If you adopt the policy that if we don't get so-and-so in the, in the White House, if this doesn't happen, if that doesn't happen, if all these things outside of me doesn't happen, then I'm doomed. Then yes, by Halloween, you are doomed. And you will be on that path of doom until you pull yourself out of it on your own because the planets are now going to go build a world of doom. And what happens come January is it's all about building a world around the perspective of what people have taken. Reality does follow uh, suggestion of the individual. So this is why we don't want to watch TV. <laughs> this is why we don't want to take other people's opinions about what's happening. So I feel like it'd be good to have some conversation. Let's have some impromptu. If you'd like to come on camera, uh, please know your sun sign, your rising sign, and your moon sign, and your step numbers. That allows us to have a really deep conversation here on camera. And I'd love to know about where your self-love revolution is happening, and perhaps what is your policy of life that you plan to adopt next Sunday on the new moon. Let's bring someone up and talk about it. Oh, here she is. There we go. Yay. Hi. Awesome. Hi. How's it going? So good to see you. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I love you so much. Oh, thank you. Hey. Nice to see you. Where are you coming from? Um, I'm in Carlsbad, California right now. Um, I'm going to the Human Garage event on Thursday. I'm super excited to be here. Yay. Congratulations. <laughs> Tell Gary I said hi. I think he's traveling right now from Columbia. Awesome. I will. What is your, um, what are your stats? Do you um, know? So I am a, a Gemini sun. I am Pisces rising and Leo moon. Um, okay. I don't know what my steps are. Okay. Pisces rising? Pisces rising. Okay. Um, and what was the moon? Leo, you said? Leo moon. Okay. All right. Um, all right. And have you, are you having a self-love revolution with your moon in Leo? Totally. How is it playing out for you? Um, it's around that abandonment wound, um, you know, being spiritual. I've been kind of outcast by my family, who's like very conservative, Catholic. Um, and as soon as I came out as a spiritual teacher, they just were just like, you're crazy. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> um, so I, I pretty much disconnected from them and just, you know, put them on pause. Um, and I'm on this journey to find myself and to really love myself. And I'm meeting other people, uh, mostly out West in California and Colorado, um, that see me for who I am and respect me and, and love me, you know, for exactly who I am. So that's where it's happening. Beautiful. And have, can you think of like sort of a, a philosophy of life that's going to keep you in that space? <sighs> I mean, that was why I wanted to talk to you because I feel like when I'm not with people that um, disapprove of me, it's easy. But when I'm back in their presence, I get nervous and I'm like, 
how do I be myself when I feel so unaccepted here? Well, okay. So if you had, if you, let's say, went to a party and there was an orphan child at the party and you could see everyone was ignoring that orphan because she was, let's say, a different skin color or whatever, how would you approach her? Would you go up to her? What would you say to her? I, I feel like I am that one that sees someone left out and is the one to go over and to welcome anyone who feels different and just to sit with her and, and show her that I see her. Precisely. And, I, I, and you know, the, the obvious twist here is that that's ultimately what has to happen when you're in the presence of your family. You have to, when you're in the presence of your family, you have to sit there and actually sit with your little girl and be like, oh, sweetie, the shit you put up with. <laughs> oh, honey, my goodness. I'm, how did you even do it? <laughs> you just honor her in that moment. And of course, you know, proving that you are crazy, you know, if someone catches you doing that, like, but in that moment, you will, you'll have a light bulb go off mm -hmm. because you'll suddenly realize, oh, what's actually happening in my family is in that moment, I'm abandoning myself to please them. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're going to catch how you abandon yourself to please them. And the only reason why you're abandoning yourself was because you want to be loved back. Right. See, but if you love yourself from the get go, you don't need to be loved back. And this is so obvious, but, but you have, you don't learn it till you apply it in that in one of those moments, right? <clears throat> like where you are with the family. So I imagine you will, you know, your family chose you because, uh, you know, and this is true for all light workers. It's like, they wouldn't have believed if it was anyone else but you. They have to see you go through it. They have to see your life change. They have to see you light up. They have to see how wrong they are over and over again about their predictions of you. And it's only sometimes after a lifetime, depends on how dug in they are to their ways, um, that they finally realize they were wrong. Mm. You know, so um, I think for us light workers, you know, we have a term for that. They're, that's a client. <laughs> That's not really a family member. That's a client. These are clients. And that is, that's a boundary distinction that might also help you. It's like, um, if they're not treating you with unconditional love, they don't get family boundaries. Mm. They get client boundaries. Mm, and that's, that's, so that's their choice that they made. They chose to, to treat you disrespectfully and to take advantage of the you, um, unconditional love boundaries of family, unconditional boundaries of family. So boundaries become conditional then, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. as a result, because you have determined that you're not going to, you're going to take advantage of my open heart around you. <clears throat> so, and, so you're a client. <laughs> and how do you know when it's time to reconnect with them? Because I feel like I'm in such a good space and I'm so happy and I, I feel more like myself now like on my own and, you know, meeting other people that treat me well. And I'm wondering, like, will there be a time when I feel strong enough to, to put myself in the presence of my family that doesn't? You don't have to even worry about that. I mean, um, because the truth is, is once, once you go to the next level, they'll come, they'll come trying to hold you back. Okay. So okay. as they start to feel you grow away, mm -hmm. um, they'll, they'll create an excuse to pull you back down back to their, their suffering level. And so at that moment, you reaffirm just how great things are going, <laughs> right? And, you know, and you, and you get past that little, little graduate hurdle. So you'll, you'll manifest a reason to connect with them, you know, mm -hmm. something will for, force them in your, in your point of view, you know. But if you, if you feel like you should check in or whatever, then just a happy, hope you're doing well kind of thing. Mm -hmm. You know, you just for their happiness, wishing for their happiness, wishing for their joy is the best thing because it's real hard to, re to retort to that in a bad way. Right. You know what I mean? And it really makes them, you want to make them work really hard to bring you down. <laughs> it's a lot of work. You know what I mean, nothing's stopping this clown car. <laughs> yeah. I, I love it. By the way, every time you laugh, it makes me feel like, oh, good. It, yeah. That's right. why they tickle me as a baby. They want to give me the laugh. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. My side still hurt. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> So yeah, I'm really I'm proud of you. I think you're doing great. Um, and Gemini, right? You said yeah. What? When's your birthday? May twenty first. Oh, okay. So 
Yeah, you was this recent this growth because Jupiter has crossed your sun. Yeah. Yeah, it just happened. Um, April was when the disconnect happened. Yeah, so that was a but really you coming into this new form is probably been since since May since your birthday. Yeah. Um, this is a yeah. big birthday for you. Yeah. The last time you had a birthday like this was 2013. Mm -hmm. So you might, I look back to what happened then. Because on my birthday, the, the people I was friends with, like no one showed up. And I, and I oh. was like, wow. And I, I had to reevaluate those friends. And then I came out West and I told them what happened. And they were like, those aren't friends. Like, that's not, that's not how you deserve to be treated. So I'm, I'm learning how I deserve to be treated. Yeah, totally. Well, and, and as you treat yourself better yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're all kind of learning. Yeah, it, that's why you want to practice <laughs> at treating yourself better. Don't stop it. Don't stop it better than before. Again, I, I can't reiterate. It has to be more and more and more and more. And I'll tell, I don't know when it's going to stop, but I'll let everyone know. <laughs> okay, like, if the planets say chill out for a while, but just keep at it because this year is going to be a remarkable year of growth for you with Jupiter in your sign. If you stay at this momentum for a full year, you're going to be amazed at how far you go. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, it's nice talking to you. You too. Thank you so back, much. Back up some time. All right. Ciao for now. Go. We'll do one more here. I'm feeling Kristen, and I was dodging her because she has my name. Kristen. Oh, my goodness. We have Kristen's blank room. We'll bring on someone else who, who will share this third third house with us. It's Anne Maria. It's trying to bring on. Hi. Well, hello. How are you? We, we're on with Kristen. She doesn't know it. <laughs> That was a weird one. I'll have to be careful in the, yeah. in the future. How are you? What's your name and where are you coming from? I, uh, Annie, and 14 degrees Pisces. That's 17. right. Yes, we've talked several times. I was like, I'll just hit the button while I'm moving through um, LSA 1 and really soaking in the 40 days. That, are you? Um, Thank so you for bringing that up. Oh my, oh, my gosh, yes. Wow. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a program on Serious Joy. It's still not too late because it's just we're only six days in. Um, uh, yep, you were on the air. Did you know that? Am I on here? <laughs> you are. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm just walking around talking. I to my know. Mom. <laughs> I'm just having a chat with my mom. <laughs> just... So we have we'll have a we'll, we'll have a little um, triple guest here. So what what is your name and where are you coming from? Kristen and. Um, I, I live in the Bay Area, but I'm up in Redmond, Washington right now visiting my mom. Oh, great. And what's your sun sign and step number? Do you know? I am a Gemini 14. <gasps> moon is Cancer 29. I know Annie and I <laughs> chatted about that number 14. Uh, moon is Cancer 29, and I'm a Sag rising, but I forget what number. Okay. We can talk about the 14 uh, since we have two 14s on at the same time. Isn't that funny? Yes. Well, it's interesting because um, 14 is particularly important in the Leo season because 14 is where your heart belongs. Mm. Yep. And, uh, and, and, what, and where your heart belongs is what your heart longs for. Um, and, you, you know, Kristen, you have Jupiter just shy of your son, one degree shy of your son. So you're about to get steamrolled over there at your mom's house. I don't know if you know that. No. So you're about to have your head. How long you be there? Um, I'm leaving next Tuesday. I think yeah. Okay, so probably right, right when right when you're leaving, something. So I, I do predict some sort of mind blowing event at your mom's. She's. I hope it's good. She's 90, so I, I want to think good thoughts. Um, oh, um, it's uh, always good. Oh, good. Okay. There is no bad. <laughs> when you're at that age, it gets a little. You know, you kind of like. Well, yeah. with what it would be her choice, and that would be her. her yeah. There her desire. Go. That's all. For it's sure. always her desire. It, it will never go. not be. It will never not like be our heart's desires. You know, especially with yeah. crossing over, it's always when the soul's ready. Always. Never before. And if you die on the operating table, they'll send you back. Yeah. She's, that's how she's serious got too much. Yeah. She's got yeah. a lot of, she's a Gemini too. And she's got a, um, she bought an RV at 86 years old and traveled to up and down the West Coast by herself. And um, she's got a it. lot of, we did an escape room yesterday. What's what's your, what's your sign and step number? My mom. Yeah. I don't know because I don't know what time she was born, but I know she's a Gemini and um, her son is Scorpio. I don't remember her rising though. She's she's June sixteenth, nineteen thirty four. Okay. Yeah. So she's a little bit. She so Jupiter's yet to hit her. Okay. 
so yeah, she, I'm sure she's got lots of fun stuff to learn about this year with Jupiter and her sign, but for 14s, uh-huh. um, it's all about where your heart belongs. And that's a, um, that's not an easy life to live because your heart usually wants weird shit <laughs> <laughs> and wants things that is unconventional or wants things that the person you're in a relationship doesn't want or wants things that the boss isn't going to like. So 14 is the opinionated person, mm-hmm. very opinionated because their heart as a Gemini in particular, your heart tweaks the information very differently than if it was just left to intellect alone. Um, right. So the heart is constantly making little improvements and putting their peanut butter fingers on everything. Right. But it's a lifetime of always going with what your heart prefers, what your heart prefers and seeing where that leads you. And sometimes it's about choosing one way or the other, but it's important that you're brought up here because <clears throat> any 14 degree people are going to be thought leaders going forward at this point point. with Jupiter in this spot because Jupiter is activating 14 which means all 14s on the earth are going to be upgraded in this next two weeks, all 14s on the earth, because it's a, it's a Gemini degree. So that means that suddenly we're going to have, so it's time to be opinionated. It's time to not um, hold back and you have the right to shock. And the shock comes from being on the side of your heart. So when you say, hey, you know, my heart's with Bob Doyle, Bob Dole, my heart's with Bob Dole. I, yeah, I wish he'd run again. I know he's 107, but I just, that's where my heart is. But people are like, wow, it's hard to argue if your heart's there. Only an ass would do that, right? And what it does is it shifts people's opinions by you being uh, courageous with what your heart's opinion is. Mm-hmm. And they will get on the side of their heart, which may be not your, you may fortify them, which is against your opinion by you being so fortified with yours. So sometimes it's through, uh, conflict and disagreeing that you do your work as a 14. Hmm. So don't assume you have to get everyone to agree with you. <clears throat> they just have to accept what your opinion is. That's my little 14 lecture. Any questions? <laughs> that's, that's, yeah, go for it, Annie. No, I was just going to say that's what I've been doing is writing and just really feeling into what is streaming through and then realize, yeah, the words are, are, are in us, the, the medicine. And I, am I, holding on to it too much and is that where the toxification is rather than voicing and sharing and creating that consistency so i think that now it's time to voice and share if jupiter was in sag i would say collect data and build knowledge but jupiter's in gemini which means that people want to see it a different way they don't know how to okay so a lot of people who are stuck in their political opinions or whatever which is kind of where it's happening right now is in politics, but it'll shift to demographics of people after the politics. It'll be those people, right? But like to work through that, people need to really get to the heart of what matters. Mm -hmm. And so if you are constantly saying, this is what my heart's opinion is, and and they go, well, I think you go, that's fine, what's your heart say? Like you force a conversation into their heart, God will take over from there. Okay. Yeah, God will take her from there and help them out. They just need that little insight. What's the six awesome. degree about? Six degrees about accepting who you are, acceptance. So today is about accepting who we are. <laughs> don't don't we, tra- we, tra- we go to seven, though, shortly? We are any minute now, probably when this ends. <laughs> I stand- Hallelujah! Pisces, 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 because I've got 17 degrees rising Pisces uh, as well. So, uh, 26 degree Capricorn moon. What degree? 26. Ooh, that's tough. <laughs> yeah. That's a tough, that's a tough moon. That's like, yes. That's a tough, that's a tough moon. That's Robert F. Kennedy's son, Junior's son. His son is 26. Uh, Capricorn, oh, wow. by the way, yeah, mm-hmm. interesting. So you're going to be real tied up in in the in the country, oh. then, no matter what whatever what happens, you're real tied up in it. You know, your it says your psychic antenna can read human knowledge. You can read flashy records, collective consciousness, human historical data, and read alien cultures. Thank you, Sirius Joy. Yes, that's Neptune and Sag. That's based on mm-hmm. Neptune. 
Sagittarius. Yeah. Yeah. You're welcome. <clears throat> oh yeah, we just set that out because it's seven degrees. Yeah, good good plug for Sirius Joy. Sirius Joy is sending out messages based on the planets, based on you, always giving you a little bit of information about yourself, right? What do you need to know about it? We're about to go to step seven. So we're telling her how she accesses the step seven. So thanks for that on camera illustration. Are you two friends off camera? We met on, on we've only met virtually, but through Human Garage and yes. Sirius Joy, like kind of all of it. Yeah. Oh yeah. wow. Yeah. I love it. We have for creating family. Yeah. Well, I love it. We saw that we were 14, and so we're like, oh, I gotta meet you. Oh yeah. yay. Yeah. Well, I've thank been you. Following th you, you and and Gary for about a year pretty religiously. It's just just like my soul just like was like soaking it up, you know, just loving it. Things we come in at you. the right time, you know. Perfect timing, I, totally. Absolutely. <clears throat> the earth wasn't can, ready until now for the most part. Yeah. You know, I think. Can, yeah, can I ask you a question? Go for it. How does that 14 gem, the Cancer 29 is a very feeling, is that about feelings and stuff? I mean, yeah. do those conflict kind of or? or... No. They give you full resolution of everything because your mind is very pinpoint precise consciousness mm -hmm. that delivers like an exact piece of knowledge or an exact piece of information where your emotions are a read of the flow of the energy. Mm -hmm. Where's the energy flowing? Where's the, what are the emotions telling you? The mind only picks out little details of the emotion. Emotion is where everything is flowing and going, a general consensus. And really what that moon is for is to rally up emotionally your speech. So whatever you're saying, that moon is like, hoo, 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 hoo. it's like, it's amping up. So you may say, give me liberty or give me peace, right? Like, so the, <laughs> the words are profound with the 14, but the emotional effect is that 29 mm -hmm. cancer and also reading the crowd and where they mm -hmm. are. 29 mm -hmm. is a, is a cloud, is a crowd pleaser. You're, you're, mm -hmm. you're built to do speeches. Okay. I do You'd read a real well. And you. You, and you will and you will move them well when you are focused on your intention. You will right. move them to tears, or move them to realize, or move them to see the light. Mm -hmm. You know. So yeah, what do you do? Well, I don't do that right now. I sit at a computer and uh, doing IT stuff, mm. um, contracts, reading legal contracts. Um, it's it's a means to an end kind of situation. It's not a calling of great joy. <laughs> Yeah, all your moves uh, there it, is data. <laughs> it came into my life when I needed it during all the lockdowns, and I was without a job, and it was like the only job offered at that time to me, and so I took it. But it's not in alignment with me, and so I don't align with the company's ethics, morals, anything. But sure. the pay paycheck has helped to dig me out of a hole that was created by those lockdowns. So yeah. it's been a little bit of a process of getting back on my feet. Um, and dental work I had to get done, just all kinds of stuff that got sidetracked because of the lockdowns. But I would love to kick this job to the curb, but you know, you didn't hear that. Nobody's on here that I know, I think. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> we'll see. They are. <laughs> <laughs> They're right here. We knew you would go. No, I, I'm actually just picking up. Don't underestimate your influence on them. Mm. So, sometimes you're sent to have an influence on others. Sometimes it's not about what you get from it is that you've been okay. sent to have an impact. That's what I'm feeling. You have more of an impact there than you realize. Okay. So, so there are no accidents. There is nothing that's just for money ever. So okay. as much, you, you know, um, you may want to say that and call it that, and that's how you justify in your mind, but there's always a spiritual reason why we're at a certain situation. And for us light workers, a lot of times it's to bring light to otherwise a situation that would not have even considered it right. in their processing. Okay. That's where the work is, really. Right. I'm, well, there's a lot so, of work here. <laughs> there's, there's work everywhere. That's what I'm saying. You light workers, there's no shortage of money or abilities or, or customers. Like, it is a smorgasbord of profitability this lifetime. Because mm -hmm. oh, everyone great. needs. I like, I like your the view on that. That's a great view on that. Yeah, totally. And this year in Gemini, you'll probably graduate out of that situation this year with Jupiter in your sign. Mm -hmm. That'd be so good. It feels like you're starting. <laughs> Something on the side in tandem. Yeah. So be open to that. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, ladies, I um I think Chris Wateki is going live next with Astro Mondays, so I gotta let this go. Okay. <laughs> I, was little, I was on a little early this year. I have to catch a plane back to Colorado. Oh, so wow. <clears throat> say goodbye to the arch for now. Another cool. time in the future. But nice thank you for coming up and sharing. It was so nice chatting with you both. Bye, Annie. Come back again. You're, you're becoming friends yeah. now, Annie. Come up every time. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Okay, right. great. Take care, ladies. See you. And everyone else watching.
watching on the Himagraj Network. It's such a pleasure to be here for you. I'll be back on Thursday with Astro um, Mechanics. And Gary and I will be back together on screen next Monday from what I understand. And otherwise, I think, hope you all have a wonderful day. Remember to create a self-love revolution and, and crown that royal love in your life. Find that mantra for daily life of living happy. And I will whistle with you on Thursday with more. Until then, I love you. It's always a pleasure at Human Garage. Chris Wateki, SeriousJoy.com, signing off here.